this is Scott the Fix the Guy. Today we have a LG washing machine with a moldy door gasket. It's a very common problem. And this video will show us how to replace it. So we have it unplugged. We're going to take a standard head screwdriver and pry off the front spring clamp and just pull it towards you. And then you're going to take the boot off of the front panel just by peeling it off and push it in to the spin basket into the tub kind of get it out of your way. And next thing we're going to do is remove the spring clamp that's holding the back of it onto the plastic tub. You have to use a special tool. Um, it's an LG spring tool. Kind of expensive. It costs about 50 bucks. But probably the only good tool to use for this type of machine. And it helps you to separate the spring clamp and then you can grab the spring clamp and the gasket and pull it towards you and get the old moldy one off. These tend to get moldy when the door is left shut so it's good to keep the door open as often as you can. Now we're going to use some pliers to remove the spring clamp that holds the little hose onto the bottom of the gasket where there's a, a drain hose. So we get that off and we can pull the whole old moldy gasket out of there and the spring clamp. And then what we'll do is put some liquid detergent on the inside rim of this little drain tube. Also we're going to get some of this junk out of this drain tube. They tend to get full of pet fur and stuff. So we're going to clean it out, put a little liquid detergent here on this new gasket, putting it on the hole where the uh, drain tube goes in, and we're gonna put it on the inside of this rim. This is the part of the gasket that will touch the uh, plastic tub, and you wanna get this pretty well lubricated so it can go on much easier. I'm just using some uh, liquid woolite, but any kind of a liquid laundry detergent would work great. So we're going to get that on the inside of that rim all the way around. And then once we do that, we can start putting on the rubber gasket onto the plastic tub. And we're going to start by making sure we have the top of the gasket. That's the one that doesn't have the drain hole at the bottom. We're going to take that and push it in at the 12 o'clock position on the plastic tub right at the top. Use two hands to do that using your thumbs mainly to push it up over the plastic rim and you should feel it almost click into place. Once you feel that you start going to your left and to your right just about one inch at a time pushing in to get that gasket over the plastic rim and we're also pushing the gasket in so we can get it out of the way so we have better access. I'm going to go ahead and hook up that little drain tube right now too. I took the spring clamp and put it way down onto the tube and now I'm going to push the rubber gasket onto the plastic tube and I'm going to use two hands. One to kind of hold the tube in position and push the tube up into the gasket as I push the gasket down. Once I feel like those are connected I'll go ahead and grab the spring clamp with my pliers and I'll move it up over the rubber so that it's going to press down on that plastic tube and I have a nice tight fit. This is a little tough part of this procedure so just take your time, a little trial and error and you'll get it. It is important to lubricate that inside part of the rubber gasket where the plastic tube is going to go into so it makes it a little bit easier to get that into position. But do be aware that it may take a while, so just, just take your time. And now we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and finish pushing in on the gasket so that it is fully onto the plastic rim of the tub. And once you feel like you have it, just reach around and just confirm it. Make sure you really have it clicked into place all the way around before you attempt to put on the back spring clamp because otherwise as you put on the spring clamp it may just fall off 
And this is important for a watertight seal, so just, just take your time confirm that it's really on there. And now we're going to take the spring clamp and we're going to feed it in underneath that little drain tube and then around the perimeter. There's a slot for it, a little ridge in the rubber uh, gasket where this will fit. And then we're going to be taking the spring and hooking it back on using this spring clamp tool. You can get these at Amazon or a lot of places online, but I think the cheapest I've seen them was like $40, $45. So we got that spring clamp back on, we got it tight, we got this bottom one on, and now we're going to feed the gasket back over the front panel, kind of the same way we did the back part of the gasket. We're just going to go an inch at a time using our thumbs and just take your time, get it all the way on there. I don't recommend that you lubricate this front one. I think it's better not to. Here's that tool again. I wish there was a better price, but I've looked a lot and it seems like unless you bought a used one, it's gonna be 45, 50 bucks. So we're just gonna get this front part of the gasket on the front panel all the way around and then we'll lubricate the um, metal spring clamp, the one that goes on the front. You put the liquid detergent on that. And that makes a big difference for being able to put the front spring clamp back on. So just making sure it's really on there tight before we attempt to put the spring clamp on. I'm going to use the liquid wool light again, but any again any kind of uh, liquid detergent is great. Even hand soap would work. Just going to get that all the way on every surface of that spring clamp. Then we'll start at the 12 o'clock position the top of the spring clamp and the spring should be at the bottom at the six o'clock position. We'll put it on the ridge and then we'll separate it and I'm going to use a standard head screwdriver to help me pry that arm and that spring will stretch and then once I get it over the ridge I'll use the screwdriver to help me that'll, that spring will lock it into position. There we go. And we're all done. We're going to just close it and test it and make sure there's no leak. But remember, it's important to keep the door open when you're not in use, and that'll help to avoid that mold growing. And that'll give you probably another eight years of use before you'd have to replace it. So thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.